On the previous video, I demonstrated how to place a new transaction in Gilas. The transaction history page is to list and manage your existing transactions. It allows you to find, list, sort, or filter the transactions and even perform tasks like marking the transactions done, paid, or collected. In addition, you can also retrieve, continue, void, refund, or permanently delete a transaction. Furthermore, you can use transaction history to print a list of jobs to be done for the day or send bulk invoices to your customers. The first tab is to search the transactions by insert date, which is the date they are placed, processing date, which is the date processed or done, payment date, editing date, date voided, parked, or by date collected or completed. The second tab is dedicated to find the transactions by due date and time. Let's assume you have created a dry cleaning or alterations order to be ready on a specific date. You can find all orders due on a specific day in here. In this video, I'm going to show you how to list, filter, and search transactions. By default, transaction history finds transactions by transaction date. You can list the transactions placed within any period of time by setting the from and to dates here. By changing the type of search, the from and to dates meaning change accordingly. For example, if you change the search type to payment date, the from and to dates refer to the date of payment and not the insert date. If you have a laundry, dry cleaners, or clothing alterations store, it's important to be able to list all the orders due on a specific date. That's why we have a dedicated page called by due date that lists all the orders due on a specific date. By default, transactions are filtered to display only the ones yet to be done. This means if you have already marked an order done, it will not be displayed unless you remove this filter. Filters give you a powerful tool to find your transactions by their status. For example, if you want to find all the transactions that are not collected yet, simply click on Not Collected and then click Apply. You can also find all the transactions done by clicking the Done filter or even list transactions done by one of the employees only. You can search for a transaction by entering the transaction number on the search box. For instance, if you want to search for order D1, simply type D1 here and then hit Enter. The details for D1 are displayed on the screen. You can also search a customer by display name, first name, middle name, last name, phone number, or email address. When you see the customer in the list, you can click on the customer's name to show his or her transactions. This feature is handy if a customer has lost his invoice or you want to see a customer's transaction history. For instance, I enter Sarah's phone here and her name will show up. Clicking on Sarah's name will take me to her transaction history. Here I can see a list of her transactions or click here to get more information about Sarah. I can also edit Sarah or place a new transaction for her by clicking the menu on the top. I'm going to go back by clicking the back button. Now we're back to transaction history. If you notice, all transaction lists look exactly the same, whether I'm on a customer history or in by due date page. Not only that, but they also share certain behaviors. You can filter, sort, get a summary or print a transactions list or even email it. Email and print functions will help in sending a statement to the customers or printing a list of orders to be done on a specific date. On the next video, I'm going to show you how to use transaction history to mark a transaction done, paid, or collected.